Let's take a look at how we can create our own control rigs from scratch for objects and characters that don't have one in Unreal Engine 5.3. I've shown you how to work with control rigs in the previous episode. If you haven't seen that, then have a look at that. This is the funky thing that we've made with the Unreal Engine 4 Manny who didn't come with a custom control rig, unlike UE5 Manny who came with one. So this is gonna be useful if you have a rigged object and you wanna animate it in situ rather than in an animation sequence directly we're going to create one with the help of a control rig. So now that we know what control rigs can be used for, let's take a look at what they look like and how to make one from scratch. It consists in the simplest form of two nodes. One is the forward solve, that's the minimum that you need. And I've also created myself a backwards solve. And that is something that you need if you want to adjust existing animations. So backwards solve is used to bake something from an animation to a control rig. Forward solve is used if you want to just animate properties of a character. We're not going to be dealing with inverse kinematics. That's a special topic. I might cover that later. But for now, let's go and in fact close this and delete this thing. And so we're going to go and create one from scratch. This is the one that I had made earlier. Let me just go and delete that. Yep, force deletes, perfect. <laughs> and uh, there we have it. It's no control rig. So in my case, I'm using, if you want to follow along, this is the third person template from the Unreal Engine 5 library. And I'm in characters mannequin UE4, and then there is meshes. And you should find these three things, the skeletal mesh, the physics asset, and the actual skeleton. So in order to give my Manny uh, control rig that he didn't have before, we select him, right click on him, and we will create control rig. That creates me a new file, namely this one. And it gives me a name here that we can leave or override. I don't really mind. I'm going to just leave it as it is. Control rig is the default name. Control rig. Mine's control rig one because I guess I already had one. Let's go and double click this to open it. I'll dock it over here. And we see an empty node graph. And we see Manny over here. Down here, have a look at the rig hierarchy. You might be in something else like the curve editor or the execution stack. Make sure you select the rig hierarchy. I'll expand that and show you all the bones that Manny has to offer. So our mission now, should we choose to accept it, is to create a relationship between these bones and control points that Unreal Engine can use to adjust the values for these bones. So the idea of a control rig is that since we can't adjust the bones directly, we need to have a separate sort of node that lets us do that. This is not dissimilar to other applications, but they do all this under the hood. If you think about Dash Studio, for example, you can see the bones only when you're actually in the bone editor. But when you're not, you can still move these things around. But if you think about it, you're not selecting a bone. You're selecting a node that is not the bone. The node controls the bone, but the node isn't the bone. And this is the same with Unreal Engine. We have the bones here, but we have nothing to control them with in our viewport here, which is why by default, I don't have an option to adjust these bones. So that's what the control rig is for. So what we need to do is select the bones that we want, add them into an array here, and we also need to create control properties for that and also add them to another array. So let's do that. I'm going to go and start at the root. I'm going to create, I'm going to, I'm going to select the pelvis spine. I'm selecting most of it, including the hand, but not anything underneath the hand. Let me go and zoom in so you can see this a bit better. So I'm going to close the hand down. I'll not select the twist bones. I'm going to use the clavicle, upper arm, lower arm, hand, R, but nothing in the hand. So we're not going to be dealing with fingers. Just keep it a little simpler here. Then I'm going to select the head and the neck and the thigh left, calf left, not the twist, but the foot left and the ball left, not the thigh twist, thigh right, calf right, not to the calf twist, so none of the twist bones, foot right, ball right, and not the thigh twist, and none of the IK bits and pieces here. So with this selection in place, let me go and left click and drag out of this to my node graph. Let go and choose create item array. That gives me this ever so slightly long array of bones. And that's nice. So that is one thing I need. I also need to so leave this selection in place. Please don't click anywhere else. It makes your life a little bit easier. Just click on any of these, right click and choose new 
add controls for selected. So if you had clicked somewhere else, you'd have to reselect them all. So please don't do that. Add controls for selected. That at the bottom here will give you a whole list of control points now. They currently don't have a relationship to our bones. And we also need to have another array of these control points. So click the first one, shift select the last one, left click and drag out of this and make yourself another array. So once again, create item array. And that means we now have two very long arrays. If you look through them, you'll see that there's a relationship between them. So the first one is called control, root control. And then in our bone thing, we have bone and it is called root. And the next one is called pelvis control and the bone is pelvis. So glance over that and make sure they are all in the same order. It's the same length. So one mustn't be shorter than the other. And all these entries need to correspond. So calf right control needs to correspond to calf right. Foot right control needs to correspond to foot right. If these are swapped over, you can go and choose a different one manually here but it's you're going to see that let's just hope this hasn't happened so these these two arrays you need the control rig goes first after that is the bone rig just so that we can visualize what we're doing so from the control array let's get a for each loop out and that will iterate over every element in the array hook that up to your forward solve and then we go and do something similar to the bones array not a for each though we're going to use an at node for that at is just something that lines these two things up by index so this gets the array by index so the index from my control thing needs to be hooked up to the bone index so now unreal engine will be able to have the same cell value so to say to play with now I need to take the rotational value of each control and set it on the bone. We do that by taking out the element here and saying, so this is each element in this array. We're gonna go and get transform out of here. And we'll use the bone array and say set transform. That needs to be hooked up in the execution graph here. And of course, it's going to complain because it doesn't have a value. So that's the value we're providing is the one we're getting from the controls. And that's so the transform value goes into value over here. And that is our forward solve set up. So with this, we can now go and compile here. And with this, we'll now see that we have uh, control points are now being arranged hierarchically. So that's kind of cool. And we can also see if I give myself a little bit more room here that I can go and select any of these, let's say spine control and go and move Manny around. So I can go and this is on the control point and it's now moving the bones around. So it's kind of proof of concept. This works, which is awesome. What we haven't got yet is the backward solve. And the good news is it's basically the same as the forward solve. So let's copy all these nodes except for the execution node at the front here, control C and go and paste these things into here. So it's the same cells. And here we need to go and make ourselves a backwards solve. And that's important if we wanted to adjust existing animation. So uh, don't just hook it up just yet. We need to swap these arrays around. So this is the control array. This is the bone array. Let's go and alt click on these two guys here and just swap them around. So Bone array goes in the front, control array goes in the back. So we're now taking on the backward solve, we're taking whatever the bone rotation is, and we're setting that on the control. That is sort of the magic behind the backward solve. And we're gonna hook that up, and that's our backward solve in place. If we were to set up inverse kinematics, we also need the backward solve because that's important to you know reverse calculate all these movements from bones back to the control rig. So that's most of our job done and we could use the control rig as is on the sequencer like I've shown you in the previous episode. But to make this a little bit more palatable slash easy to use uh, for those artistic folks around us who don't want to deal with long selection menus, we can go and change what we see in the viewport here. So Unreal Engine has used a red sphere as a default control on these things. So like root control is this red sphere, pelvis control, we don't even see. I mean, there is a sphere in here if you look closely, but it's so small, it's inside his body. So if I wanted to select the pelvis, which I trust me, I don't, but if let's say, let's say spine one, spine one is a better example. So there's, there's something more useful here. I can still, 
use it, but it's difficult for me to select it in the viewport. So Unreal Engine has this option to let me change that gizmo that's being used here. So in, in my case, it's a sphere that's buried here. Let's go over to the details panel. Let me go take my face away so we can see this together. Under shape, we can see is this thing actually visible or invisible? So we want it to be visible. And then shape is a default. So default is this red sphere, but you can pick something else. Let me go and say octagon thick for example, or octagon thin, perhaps. Let's do, let's, let's do octagon thick, much better, octagon thick. We still can't see it here because it's still too small, so it's inside his body. So let's go and make it bigger. And that is down here with the scale. Click the little lock icon so that's a uniform scale. Let me make it five, perhaps, and tap. And now we can see that it is coming uh, into view here. Are we, can we? Do we? Yes, there we go. That's that's that. But it's, it's the orientation is all wrong. So I don't want it to be like this, even though it would work. It's just not, you know, it doesn't look great. So you can go down here and choose the rotator and maybe use this uh, 90 degrees here. 90 degrees, tap and survey says, yes, that looks a lot better. So now I have a selectable control in my viewport but only for spine one. So if you wanted to repeat that process, you have to go to spine two, do the same thing, octagon thick, select that, make it five, not 655, just five, and also rotate this by 90 degrees. And then, you know, we're building ourselves the spine controls up here. So it'll take a while to go through this, which is why I'm saying perhaps don't just do this because you feel like you have to. You don't because you can still select these things in the animation outliner uh, and that might actually be easier because sometimes when you see so many things uh, on top of one another, like if I select this one and bend it down or maybe I'll select the next one and bend it down. So while there is visual control, there might be a point where you just can't select them in the viewport and hence don't make yourself more work than you actually absolutely have to because um, you know, there is always the anim outliner. So now that we've done all this, Control Shift S saves all of this. Let's go back to our scene here. Maybe delete my animation and bring in this control rig and see if it if it works. Plus control rig, asset based control rig, control rig for Manny, and boom, there we go. We're in the anim outliner automatically. If you're not, if you're still in selection mode, you can always switch this over. And that's where you can select all your control points here. So just in case, and we've seen how to use this in the previous episode, if you haven't, then you know, I'll put a link to that in the description. So just a little troubleshooting. If you come across something in which in the control rig, or in fact, in the scene, you can see that maybe his arm is on the ground or his hand isn't attached to his hand is attached to his face or his leg missing or something. That is usually because there's something wrong with how these arrays are lined up. So have a look through every cell and see if pelvis control matches pelvis, spine control one matches spine one and so forth. Sometimes you might find that by accident, upper arm control matches hand. And in this case, just go and change it over so that they're all in order. If it means too much work, just delete the arrays and select them again from the outliner here and um, drag them in. Bob's your uncle, Betty is your aunt. I have written instructions for how to do this as well. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to that in the description too. That is how you create yourself your custom control rigs for basically any character that doesn't have it, including DAS and Reillusion characters. I hope you found that useful. It's not as scary as I thought, and I enjoy using them in my production work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.